What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as MCJ, and we're back with another video on Power Automate and about functions. And we're going to look at a new function in Power Automate called nth index of. So I previously covered the two other index videos, the last index of and index of, and this is kind of similar to those. This is kind of adding an extra parameter to allow us to do a different thing. So nth index of allows us to take a look at a string that you pass into it, find a substring, so find a part of it that matches something that you put in, and then uh, and then you can specify um, which index of it you want. So you can find maybe the first the first iteration of this thing, or, or like fourth iteration of this this substring inside this text. So if maybe you have a bit of uh, repeating text, or maybe you know that you always want to skip the first time this comes, but then you want to find um, find maybe the, the fifth time it comes or the last time it comes or you know something like that. Um, you can put these, these things in here uh, and what it'll do is it'll return to you the index of where this is. So it'll show you in the string where it is. So you can use this with substring um, or, with, or with splice or, or, or with slice to um, try and get out the piece of text or the piece of uh, information that you want from this. So let's take a look at it because it'll be a bit, little bit easier to show you some examples. So we're starting off with a manual trigger uh, in our Power Automate flow here, as per usual. And then underneath there, we have our compose action, which our trusty compose action. Um, we're going to click into it and we're going to go through to our expression window. And then in here, we'll type in nth index of, and we can see it pops up. And we open our parentheses. And then we can see the little pop up with the things that we want. So we need to pass in some string, we need to pass in some search text, and we need to uh, we need to pass in an occurrence or a number. So the the text is a string to uh, that we're passing in. Um, the search text is that substring of the thing that we want to find, and the occurrence is like uh, which one do we want to find to give us the position. Um, so we'll add some single quotation marks. I found the easiest way to try to show this and explain this is to show it with numbers. Um, you can do it with text. It works the same thing. It works the same way with text. I just find numbers a little bit easier. So we'll put in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that is that is the text. That's the number. That's the text that we're passing in here. And then we want to pass in where do we want to maybe find uh, what what do we want to find out of all this. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with the number, um, the text again. Uh, we'll start with two. So we want to find when, actually no, we'll do three. We want to find when three occurs. Um, and we can see three occurs uh, four times in this. And we want to maybe find the first occurrence of three. So we want to count the number of, number of characters in this string. And we want to find the first occurrence. So it's there, it's number three. Um, so it should start at zero, so I think it's going to be zero, one, two. So it should return two. Take your bets now on whether I'm right. <laughs> we'll find out as we go along. So we'll just test this from a previous run, because all we're trying to do is is test this formula out. So flow run successfully, that's great. And we can see two. Yay, I was right. Yay. Celebration. Um, so what that does is that counts the number of characters from zero. So zero being number one. Uh, one being number two, and three being number two, um, if that makes sense. So it starts at zero, where it's going to count from, um, all the way through to the end of the string. So that's that's great. So that's why I want to start with number three, so you can kind of see that. Uh, but what happens if we change this to, um, instead of the third iteration, the, the first iteration, what if we change this to the third iteration? So what I count, what I find the number three, uh, when it, it um, popped up the third time. So hit save and test. And that's going to give us 10. So it counted from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3 and caught it at the number 10 spot. So again, starts at 0, all the way through to 10. That's great. That's, that's brilliant. That's exactly what I want. But what happens if we um, say we know 3 occurs like four times because we wrote one two three four four times what happens if we say right i want to find the sixth occurrence of this okay well let's, let's test that out let's see what it does i'll put this in and hit save and then we'll open this up and it says minus one so it knows that 
it won't be able to find, it can't find that string. So it, we've, we've counted through it, we've gone once, we've gone twice, we've gone three times, we can't find the sixth iteration. We can't even find the fifth iteration, but we can't find the sixth iteration. So it comes back with a minus one, can't find it, don't know, please turn it down later. So that's fine. Now this this does work if you if you add other things in as well. So if I add um, say like you know one two three, well uh, one two in there, and we want to find the uh, and we want to find the first iteration of one two three, where does that start? So again we we we've got more than one piece of text here. Um, so what what's it going to return with? I think it'll return with zero because it it should return the index zero. So it returns the first starting point of your string. So it, it will allow you to, if you're using something like substring or use something like slice, to know where that piece of text is so you can you can pull it out. That's all great. What happens if we put in something that it doesn't know? So let's put in Fred. Uh, I'll hit test and we'll hit run, same test. Da, da, da. Minus one again. So again, it can't find um, that substring. So it can't find that text. So like when we said we want the sixth iteration of something, it just can't find any iteration of this. You know, because we, we specified giving the index the first first time we see this, it can't find it at all. It's just trying to do minus one. So. I think this is really useful. I think nth index of gives us a little bit more flexibility over things like last index of or index of because we can figure out, okay, this may be a repeating thing. I don't want the first one, I don't want the second one, I want the third one um, because we have like you know these, these different repeating pieces of text. It's also good for numbers. If we know certain numbers might pop up, we can like you know pull out the certain ones. And I do think this will be useful when you're using things like substring or, or, or slice to um, get those little little bits of information out uh, and get exactly what you want. So that's where I see this as being useful. And um, you can also use it for validation. Um, as said, like I put in Fred there. Fred wasn't in all the numbers, therefore we get minus one. So we can say, okay, if we don't see this um, in our in our substring then maybe we don't write that to our record. So again, if you can't do that client-side validation, if you can't do that user-side validation uh, in your app or, or how you're getting your data, you could use this to say, right, okay, if they haven't put in this word or this thing that we're looking for, then don't bother writing it to the database because we'll just generate errors and we'll have to then do some manual fix-ups. So it can be used for validation as well. That's, that's my thoughts off the top of my head. What do you guys think? Have you used nth index of? Did you know it existed? It is a new function in Power Automate, only added in the last year, I believe. So um, so yeah, if you if you do know about it and you've used it, let me know what you used it for in the comments down below. If you've not, but you've got a plan for it, again, let me know. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that would be really appreciated. If you've not already, hit the subscribe button, stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you next time.